Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the UK V, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. It is going to be turning progressively drier but also it is going to be turning progressively colder as we head towards the latter part of this upcoming working week. It is looking highly likely now we see the proper the first proper cold snap or cold weather of the autumn slash early winter with very cold Arctic air heading our way. Exactly what it entails in terms of its timings, its intensities, and whether we see any precipitation, potentially some snow, is still uh, very much up in the air as the models are still in a bit of disagreement exactly how it does evolve with its timings and, of course, how cold it does get. But the majority of runs now and the majority of ensemble members are showing at least uh, some Arctic air moving in for a time towards the last part of this week. And some runs, as said, are showing actually something quite sustained, like a proper early uh, early winter cold spell arriving so we'll explore that as i said in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now if you start on the live radar it's a classic westerly flow at the moment with lots of drizzle rain as we've got a generally pretty mild air mass over the top of us you can see lots of these small green areas indicating drizzly rain uh, across much of England and Wales, some heavier rain across the northwest here, uh, some heavier pulse there, same into Scotland, but it should be turning dry over the next 24 hours or so, just miserable really through the rest of today, but these showers should slowly fade away. Now, as of this afternoon, temperatures are pretty mild actually, lots of yellows around indicating temperatures into the low teens, but it will be dropping quite significantly uh, down from that. You see to our north up towards Scandinavia, Greenland, Iceland, all these lighter blues and purples indicating temperatures freezing or below freezing. And this is where the air is going to be coming from up towards Greenland and Iceland by the end of this working week. Now, if you have a look at the latest UKV, we can just about get to the arrival of that cold air. But we have got plenty of generally milder conditions, but also drier conditions for this upcoming working week. Now, as we do spread through the rest of today, those showers will continue, but should peter out by this evening. We could see some more heavier rain through the early hours of the morning in the south. And as we head into Monday, another relatively dry day but still some showers around and some thicker cloud as we head into tuesday again an actually relatively dry day again a bit of drizzle with some thicker cloud around but on the grand scheme it actually is pretty dry into wednesday again could see some drizzle and lighter rain in the north but still relatively dry and thursday we could see a bit more rain further northwards but this is the cold front that is now starting to bring that very cold air in from the north just look out to the north sea off to the north of scotland showers turning more to snow there and it is turning a lot cold even showers out to sea falling as snow indicating it is a very cold air mass heading our way this rain here is dividing lines so you can see here right to the end of the uk by like early hours of friday we're just about now starting to bring that very cold air in and you can see it distinctly here on the 850 HPA temperatures, around 9 or 10 degrees across the southwest of England, towards northeast Scotland, we're down to minus 10 or minus, uh, yeah, minus 9, minus 10 degrees at 850 HPA, which is cold enough to bring snow even to low-lying areas. That air is going to try and drift southwards, but this is where we do get the uncertainty. Does the very cold air head southwards? Uh, does it sort of linger southwards? Does it just generally move southwards and get pushed away? Or whether it actually sustains itself is still, as I said, a little bit up in the air. You can see how cold this air mass is. Look at the dew points widely for northern England uh, and upwards. We're below freezing dew points, again, giving the possibility of wintriness falling from any showers or any spells of precipitation. Now, if you look at the two meters temperatures, you'll actually be able to see it's not particularly cold the next four or five days. Really, Friday, Saturday is when it's to be turning cold. You see this afternoon, widely low teens, not feeling that warm because of the cloud and rain, but actually, on the thermometer, it's not too bad. As we get into tomorrow, we're getting temperatures around the 10 to 12 degree mark, not too bad, but not looking particularly great either. Into Tuesday, could be a bit of a frost in Scotland under some under the higher pressure, but as we enter Tuesday, temperatures slowly dropping, but again, nothing too bad. Same into Wednesday again, 9 to 12 degrees, 
chilly in places, but still really generally average. And then into Thursday, starting to get colder to our north, but to our south still, 10 to 30 degrees. But the early hours of Friday, you can see most of Scotland now is into the low single digits, if not touching freezing, as that very cold air moves in. Again, from the, the look of this latest UKV, if the UKV was correct here, probably wouldn't get established this cold air until sort of sat, uh, Friday afternoon into Saturday. So most shouldn't see any very cold air or very cold conditions at the surface until probably Friday night, Saturday. Um, so still a good few days away, but a big change is looking likely to be coming by the end of this working week. Now, if we do have a look at the longer range where we do have a lot of conflicting thoughts on the intensity and the positioning of these pressure uh, areas of higher pressure, lower pressure, and of course, colder air moving with that now you can see as we progress over the next few days high pressure is going to move in but look to our north it ridges up towards greenland from this latest gfs and you see by thursday into friday very cold air starts to head in now this is a very cold northerly wind but will it be sustained will this high pressure topple now the latest gfs has it temporarily toppling but still keeping us in with a northerly flow. So yes, there probably be, would be very few showers around with this, little in terms of snowfall by the end of the weekend, but it would remain very cold indeed. But we see another low pressure system move in that could introduce some moisture. It would introduce milder air, but could introduce moisture and bring the risk of snowfall, especially further northwards. And we actually stay pretty cold here all the way to the end of the run, where eventually the high pressure topples over the top of us. But at this stage, if we look at the upper air temperatures, very cold air is still close by, so it would make it feel very chilly at the surface with a bit of inversion going on. If we do run back and have a look at those raw upper air temperatures, as you can see by the end of this week, the minus 5 line comes in from the north, maybe even the minus 10 for parts of Scotland, the minus 5 dominating, but eventually losing a little bit of steam by Sunday and Monday. This is where we see a brief area of milder air for cold air returns, again bringing the risk of some snow before eventually that milder air gets completely pushed away and we stay very cold all the way to the early days of December. So this would actually keep most of the country pretty bitterly cold for about a week straight here. Yes, temporary milder sector at time that would bring the risk of some snow, more likely rain as it does move through, but snow maybe in the north over higher ground could be some issues with that if this came off. But regardless, it would be very cold at the surface uh, for many of these days. And if we have a look at the two meter temperatures here, look at that Sunday, the 3rd of December, midday, most areas struggling around two to five degrees. And the same into the days following that, really struggling around the low single digits for a foreseeable period. Uh, again, if even if we go back to next Saturday, look at that, only four to six degrees for many on Saturday. And again, GFS is a particularly high resolution, so some areas would be even colder than this. So yes, GFS on board with not only Arctic air moving in by the end of the week, which is looking pretty likely now, but actually keeping it here for a significant period of time, bringing in a proper late autumn, early winter cold spell. Now, as I said, GM is a little bit of an anomaly today not producing anything cold at all. Now, if we do get to the point at which we would expect the high pressure to reach towards Greenland, we've got this very strong area of low pressure that none of the other models are developing. Now, this topples the high pressure instantly and doesn't allow it to reach northwards. So all that cold air goes into Scandinavia and we stay with a westerly flow. It has another go at trying to reach northwards by day 10, but actually we stay pretty mild and actually pretty unsettled. So you can see all that cold air that would be heading our way pushes straight into Scandinavia, bringing heavy snowfall and widespread, basically cold conditions there, and then subsequently to Eastern Europe, the UK staying pretty mild, or eventually could turn slightly colder right at the end of the run, with a northerly wind trying to develop there. But really, the GM, GM not having anything with that cold uh, at all. Now, I would be a little bit more confident with this possibility, uh, or saying that there is uh, you know, a real possibility of this happening, but if we look at the ensemble members, which we'll see in a couple of minutes' time, they really are pretty supportive of at least moderately cold air moving in, at least a northwesterly or brief northerly wind moving in. Uh, very few ensemble members at all, which are you know, showing the whole range of outcomes, are, are, are developing nothing at all. Most are bringing Arctic air in for a couple of days, in, and some, like the GFS operational one, bringing it in for a number of days and keeping it here. So I do think this GM really is a normally. We'll even check out the GM ensembles just to prove that as well. So yeah, 
We'll show that in a couple of minutes time. But if you look at the east and north, it's a little bit more skeptical of the colder pattern, especially further southwards, but it still does develop it nonetheless. High pressure moving over top of us, ridging northwards up towards Greenland. It does develop that low towards uh, northeast Canada, but nowhere near as significantly as the GM does. It does bring cold air into the north, but this low actually slides through. If we look at the upper air temperatures, this can actually be a major snow event for maybe northern England and Scotland. And then once that low clears by Sunday, then we start to pull in the cold air for all. And by the end of this run, by day 10, we're all in a pretty bitterly cold air from the north. You can see the uh, temperature emissions are loading, unfortunately. But you can see that bitterly cold north to easterly winds. The upper air temperatures widely below freezing there. Uh, just takes a couple of days longer than the GFS to bring it in. So as I said, timings and significance of that cold air is deviating between different models, but they all are roughly in agreement that it's going to occur by the end of this week. If we do look at the two meter temperatures from this East WF run by next Wednesday, look at that. Uh, by next sorry, Tuesday, look at that. Middle of the day, widely we're looking at sort of two to five degrees for inland areas. So really quite cold uh, for end of November. Uh, yeah, really looking interesting indeed. And of course, we're not looking at precipitation yet because we still haven't got the exact uh, exact pressure patterns resolved and timings resolved, but there would likely be wintriness with this, especially for Scotland, but could be even some snow elsewhere as well. But it is something we can have a look at more, uh, in a lot more detail towards the uh, over the next few days, really. Now, after you finish by looking at the latest ensembles, look at the latest GFS for London, generally average to even quite significantly above average by the uh, by the middle of the week for upper air temperatures, and then we see a big plunge with the majority of ensemble members now down towards uh, freezing, if not below freezing, and quite a cluster now appearing towards that minus five mark. And look at the consistency from some of the ensemble members. Most are keeping a very sustained cold spell. The GFS keeps it all the way to the end of the run. In fact, the majority actually keep it for around five, six, seven days. GFS, maybe up to ten days there. But definitely, GFS ensemble members going for a sustained cold spell with even some precipitation mixing in there, bringing the risk, as I said, of some snow. If you look at the two meter temperatures for this, look at that, plunging down to the mid single digits or even low single digits there. And again, these are low resolution ensemble members. And of course, they've got some milder outlines pushing that average up. So we could even be looking only two or three degrees nearer the time we get high resolution models on these temperatures. And I said, there is a cluster of runs there showing precipitation with that colder air. If you do look at the new snowdeck spike, there are quite a few snowdeck spikes. No clustering, so no real agreement on timings or uh, on amounts, but definitely showing the possibility even areas further south we could see at least some falling snow as we progress over the next week or two. I said the most important thing for snow really is the dew points, and you can see dew points are around the freezing point, if not lower, again indicating the real possibility of wintry precipitation. If we do check out the Eastern WF, definitely trending colder today. Most young soil members are average to below average, with quite a cluster again appearing around that minus five line uh, towards the end of this working week. Again, nowhere near uh, as close to the minus five point as the GFS on soil members, and definitely an increase in the longer term, but nevertheless still showing a pretty cold air mass moving in, at least for a few days from the majority of these runs. Uh, and of course, with a pretty significant dip here in those two meter temperatures from the majority, not all, you can see some still going up into the low teens, but the majority down even towards the mid to high single digits there. So definitely a big cool down. And if you compare to the GEM ensembles, you can see that the operation run there is on the milder end of its ensembles. Still, uh, you can see the GEM overall isn't actually too, uh, too bullish on a cold spell, but you can see the operational run there is one of the mildest runs out of all the ensemble members again suggesting that it is a little bit of a milder outlier there again can't rule it out there is a possibility that that does happen but from all indications from the operational runs today uh, or the other operational runs sorry and all the other ensemble members it is looking more likely than not now uh, that we do see cold air move in for at least a time and there is a chance if we see something like the gfs come off or a properly sustained cold spell with the risk of snow in places. So it's gonna be a very interesting watch over the next few days. I wouldn't get your hopes up yet as things can change. And we have seen this over the past few years where things can change ever so quickly. 
One minute, the cold spell could be getting upgraded, become more severe, colder, more snowy, and the next minute, it gets completely cancelled. So don't get your hopes up too high yet uh, uh, if you are looking forward to some snow. Or if you don't like snow at all, then don't uh, don't be too uh, doom and gloom about this. Uh, it doesn't. It's not guaranteed that it's going to happen. It is looking you know, likely, but there is still a margin of error within the models, and there are still some runs, fewer than there were a few days ago, some runs are still showing milder conditions or at least less cold conditions. So we just have to keep a very close eye on it. Of course, we can have another update out tomorrow. And hopefully, probably by Wednesday time, we should have at least a weekend resolved and good confidence on what will be arriving. And of course, we'll be able to have a look at any snow risk as well. If by that point, we're still seeing a significant opportunity there for snowfall. So I said, I'll keep you updated. Hope you have a good rest of the weekend. I'll see you again for another video soon.